Hi chickens. Lately I have learned some big lessons about letting go and about the fact that worry doesn't really get you anywhere. Worry without action. Worry when it's just anxiety and it's in the pit of you and it's not actually doing anything productive and it's not allowing you to act. It's just making you sit there all curled up tightly in a knot and kind of stewing is not productive. It is a huge waste of energy and you would think by now I would have learned that lesson but I do feel lessons come to you in different ways at different times and they make you realise different things each time they come along because the situation is always different. Sometimes it's about money, sometimes it's about friendship or relationship, sometimes it's about your spiritual growth, whatever it is, a creative project and each time you have to realise anew that worry and anxiety and stress over something without action and without productive forward motion is pointless and it's draining you, it's exhausting you. Recently I've been seeing on Facebook a lot this picture going around and being shared a lot which says something like 90% of the things you worry about never actually happen. And whether or not that's true, whether or not the things you're worrying about are kind of candy floss things that are never going to materialise, or whether you actually worry a lot about death which is of course completely inevitable, I think either way the message is clear that worry is actually not productive. Worry is going to keep you in stagnation. And I think that's something that I've realised. And letting go of worrying about something is extremely liberating. And I think it comes from really recognising what is in your control and what is not within your control. You can very clearly divide a problem down into those two things. What you can control, what you can take action for, and what is within your remit, and then what is absolutely inevitable or what is immovable or what is impossible or what is definitely going to happen. And once you've actually released your worry over the things that you can't do anything about, then you can start really getting down to what you can do in the here and now to improve your situation, what your power will allow you to do. And your power will always allow you to do something to improve, to strengthen, to fortify your boundaries, to fortify your core being, to live in alignment with it. There is always something that you can do. There is always an option. And those big, immovable, impossible things, that... That inertia that comes from inevitability, you need to let that go so that you can act in the here and now on something that is really within your remit and is really realistic. So I suppose that's what I wanted to say really. I, I guess I've, um, I've had a few worries lately about stuff that is out of my control and that is happening. It is happening regardless of whether or not I worry. And the more I worry, the less I feel that I can really get things done that are within my control and can make me feel better about the situation and can make me feel productive and as though I am acting in my own interest. So worry really is a huge enemy, and I think that's true for a lot of people. I think worry and stress and anxiety and sitting there um, kind of riddled in your own angst is a huge problem because it's just a waste of energy. And that's something that I've had to really accept. <laughs> I think that letting go, which is really what I'm talking about here, that feeling of release, that feeling of just letting go of those things that are out of your control, really comes from not attaching too much emotional weight to one specific outcome. And that's something that I feel I've done for a lot of my life. I think even when I did become a very spiritually centred being, which probably happened around the age of 21, I think, and I'm 28 now, um, so I feel I've been reasonably spiritually centred for almost a decade. I think that even after that transpired, I still clung on very tightly to one specific idea of an idealised future or an idealised outcome. And the emotional weight that I was throwing behind that idealised outcome rendered me unable to recognise that I could be independent and content in the moment. It, it's never about the moment when you attach too much weight to one future ideal. It's never about the moment when you believe that a feeling can only be obtained through one specific goal, one specific outcome, one specific achievement. You begin to tell yourself that you'll never ever get that feeling of joy or of achievement or of personal power unless you start your own business or unless you have a child or um, until that time when you can retire or whatever it is, that, that moment in the future that you hang all of that emotional weight onto is actually then becoming your trap, you're becoming a slave to it. I think that's why it's so important that a lot of people talk about the difference between going after a goal and going after a feeling. 
when you go too succinctly and absolutely after one set goal, one idea of you in the future doing that thing that you really want to do or being that person that you really can idealise being, then you are telling yourself that the feeling that you want to get to is only at that goal. It is only at that doorway to that goal and you cannot get it now. And that's not true. If you have an idea in your mind of something that you really want, then stop idealising and visualising that thing that you really want and have a look at what you think you'll feel when you get that thing that you want. What is the feeling that you're after? What is the feeling that you hanker after? And once you've separated the feeling from the goal that you have in mind or from that one vision of yourself or your future that you have in mind, then you can start to work out at least 10 other ways to get that same feeling and to get it much more immediately and to get it much more simply without looking at five years in the future or 10 years in the future and thinking that you're going to be essentially not content until that moment. Because I think we do ourselves a huge disservice by attaching feelings too completely to specific goals. And it's definitely something that I've done and I see my friends doing it and I think it's very dangerous because I think feelings are actually a lot more simple and boiled down than we think they are. We think that they are attached to some thing that we can't do right now or we can't be right now because there are too many obstacles in the way. When in actual fact, when we break the feeling away from the goal, the feeling itself is actually simple. The feeling itself can be gotten to in a number of different ways. For example, recently, I really, really wanted to give my brother a massive chunk of money, which I actually just don't have at the moment. In the past, when I've been, I mean, I've had my financial ups and downs like everybody, and in the past, whenever I've been financially secure and financially viable, I have given away money to my family. I've always made sure that my family were taken care of, and that's something that I really like doing. That is something that makes me feel content. My brother is at a bit of a transitory stage in his life at the moment and I would love to just be able to give him a couple of grand to start him off on the next leg of his trajectory, but I can't do that. So instead of worrying about it and instead of being angst-ridden over it, I actually broke the feeling away from the goal. I broke the feeling away from that idealised image of giving him all of this money and I thought to myself, okay, what do I want to feel about my relationship with my brother. What is it that by giving him two grand, I feel that I'm going to be able to get emotionally, that I need to get? And what I realized was that I just needed to help him. I wanted that feeling of being there for him and being able to help him stabilize through this difficult time in his life. And I started thinking about other ways that I could do that that didn't involve finances, because at the moment that's not an option for me. So I decided to write him a 2000 word letter about my own breakup from my first love. You know, that's kind of what he's going through at the moment. He's broken up from his first serious girlfriend. They just moved in together six months ago and now, unfortunately, the situation has changed and it's all over. It's a very difficult time for him. It's scary for him. And so I decided to sit down and write down all of the advice that I had, all of the tips that I had, all of the experience that I have harnessed, harvested, and give it to him to show him that I love him, that I've been there and that he will survive. And I think that letter actually did more for him than two grand ever could, to be honest. And it was only once I let go of that one idea that I had in mind, of that one way that I could help him, and actually started branching out into other stuff that I could do, stuff that I can do now, stuff that doesn't cost anything. That's when I realised that there are other ways to get to that feeling that we attach to that goal. If that goal isn't possible, there is another way to get the feeling which is possible in the here and now. And ironically, I feel like once we've actually gotten that feeling from something simple that we can do now that doesn't require for us to worry over something that we don't have, it's then that our life expands. It's then, once we've done that thing, that we actually, I suppose what I'm talking about is the law of attraction. We actually invite things towards us once we've done that thing that's helped us harvest that feeling that we convinced ourselves we couldn't get because, you know, it's a million miles away in that place in the future when I have two grand. No, it was there for me right then and there. It just took a little bit of time and emotional energy and I got the same feeling and I know that he really got something out of it, which was the crux of what I wanted. It was the important thing for me. So, you know, I do think attaching too much emotional weight to one outcome can be very dangerous. I think the same is true of career and work and thinking about things that we would like to do to make a living that kind of feed us at soul level. I think sometimes we can end up resenting what we're doing in the here and now so much more because we convince ourselves that all of our contentment is based in that one abstract point in the future, in time. 
and we can never have it now. So we need to let go. We need to actually split it up. You know, we need to first split it up into what we control and what we can't. And then we need to split it up into feeling and goal. Because I guarantee you nine times out of 10, the feeling and the goal are actually not synonymous with each other. They're not. You know, you can get that feeling in another way. I think a lot of time mindfulness is hugely underrated. And mindfulness, of course, has gone far and beyond Buddhism now. Mindfulness is something that we all practice. We're encouraged to practice it. We talk about it all the time, no matter what kind of path we're on. Just appreciating and watching the unfolding moments of life and actually also zooming in and savouring certain moments too is a huge way to let go and to release and to stop worrying about things that can't be changed or to stop worrying without actually throwing any action behind it. Mindfulness is just kind of a passive observance without any emotional weight placed on anything particularly, but just observing the moment. And then savouring is the part of mindfulness which is so interesting, which positive psychologists talk about quite a lot. But they talk about actually zooming in on one very enjoyable part of the moment and actually savouring it, savouring it with the five senses, actually putting a microscope over it. So, for example, if you're out in the garden and you see a bird in a tree, you can zoom in on that bird in that tree and just enjoy the moment that you are having, discovering that bird, watching its behaviour and perhaps understanding that you are interconnected with it if you're anything like me. Savouring is about making yourself your favourite beverage and actually just sitting there and enjoying it in the moment, savouring it, savouring the taste of it and the smell of it, the flavour of it, how it feels when it goes down your throat and hits your stomach. Savouring is just about amplification of the moment for your own enjoyment and to actually feel alive and to feel that you're in the here and now. I think that savouring is something that I've um, I've advised to a client a lot lately. I just finished a month of intention with a client of mine. And I realised that, you know, talking about savouring with her rather than talking about mindfulness was the crux of what could be placed into her practice that would make the real difference, that amplification of the moment and that intensity that comes with just picking apart and dissecting that one moment of joy as it unfolds, not to hang on to it, but actually just to permit it to make you feel more like you're in your own skin and more like you're part of the earth. Another way I think people need to let go, something that they need to utilise in order to let go, is to see themselves as wise. I think very often when we worry and we're really anxious about something, we don't see ourselves as wise, we see ourselves as foolish, we think about everything that we don't know yet or everything that we can't work out or everything that we are unable to produce or unable to harvest for ourselves. We don't celebrate enough our past experiences, we don't think about how much we've actually learned because when we think about what we've learned and the lessons that we actually already have under our belt, then we empower ourselves. Then we think of ourselves as our own guiding light. We are our own sage. We are a mystic on our own journey. And when we can think like that, we can help ourselves deal with the unfolding moments so much better. I think there's too much of a sense of berating yourself when you're worried and when you're anxious. You think about how disempowered you are and you think about how small and insignificant you are, how little that you can really do to change things. When in reality, if you look at all the lessons that you've learned, the experiences that you've amassed, the memories that you have, and the things that you've really realised you could change in the past, then you are drinking in that self-empowerment and that's going to really go somewhere. That's going to turn into action and that is going to manifest itself as self-love, which is such an important part, I think, of everybody's journey. The journey towards individuation, the journey towards authentic living, the seed of that is self-love and if you don't celebrate the experiences you've had and the things you've learned, the things that have come to you and guided you, the things that you've lived through, the things you've endured, the pain that you've endured and gotten over, the things that have been knocked down and torn to pieces and then the things that you've built back up from those pieces. If you look at that and you celebrate that, if you amplify that and don't amplify so much the weakness that you feel, then you're in a much stronger position to get over the hurdle of worry and actually start something which is going to formulate itself into empowerment. And also I think finally I just want to tell you guys, always tell yourself that you've done enough. Sometimes I feel like in my life and in the lives of those around me, we never ever feel like we've done enough 
towards our goal, towards our personal goals or in our work life or in our family life. We're always pushing for that next thing. When the sun goes down at the end of the day, don't so many of you feel like I could have done this, I should have done that, I should have made time for that, I should have abandoned lunch and instead done that, you know, now I'm going to have to do that tomorrow. I think sometimes we just don't accept that we did what we could do during the course of the day. We need to let go of that feeling of always shoulda, coulda, woulda, done more, had more, been more, said more. Sometimes life unfolds in a funny little way. It's not a straight line, it's quite labyrinthine. And a lot of the time when we do take time out for thinking or daydreaming or sleeping or taking a bath, that's actually just refueling. It's actually just us accepting that we're low on energy. We don't have the energy to do more. We didn't have the energy to do more. We needed to actually change the batteries. Sometimes I think with my personal work and with my writing and with everything that I'm trying to achieve, I'm actually killing myself spiritually with thinking I could have done more, I should have done more. There were more hours in the day than I actually did things with. There's no excuse for it, you know, it's terrible, I should have done more. And that is just worry that is never going to go anywhere. The day is done with, it's past, you know. Make a plan, write a schedule, make sure that you don't stick too doggedly to that schedule, but instead allow it to be malleable, flexible, in tune with you as you wake up that morning. Strive to do your best and do not strive to do anything beyond that. Celebrate yourself, celebrate what you've done during the course of the day. Honour yourself and think of yourself as wise. Think of yourself as able to hold your own hand because you, you can do that and you will feel better when you do. I think that's all I wanted to say about letting go. It's just, I've been having a lot of thoughts about it lately with my own experiences and such, and I just wanted to posit some advice. Much love to you all.